All right, welcome back, everybody. And uh, let's now talk to some of the big stories from yesterday that many are talking about and something that's just come in now. We'll also talk to uh, the uh, news release that's just come through. It's a statement by Gauteng Premier David Makura on the appointment of his executive council. We're just going to get those names for you up on a screen uh, in a short while, and then we'll talk through them as well. But so much happened, and uh, we'll talk to these events. First up is, of course, the swearing-in of ANC Deputy President David Mabuza as a member of parliament and former public enterprises minister Pravin Gordhan starting legal proceedings to get public protectors report set aside. Now that report found he had acted improperly and violated the constitution when he approved a pension payout for former SARS deputy commissioner Ivan Pele. Now we know that the 22 people who were flagged by the ANC's integrity commission have appeared before it. They include former spokesperson Zizi Kodwa and former Secretary General Gwede Mantashe. To analyze all of this, we've got Kolani Dube from the Shubara Institute. Always good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live again. Morning, uh, and also to the viewers at home. All right, so let's begin with the swearing in of uh, the Deputy President of the ANC, David Mabuza, yesterday, apparently appearing before the Integrity Commission. Looks like all is okay. Talk to me about this. What do you, what do you make of what, what's just transpired over this last week? Look, I've had a number of people claiming that he was being very strategic and he was trying to disarm those who think that uh, in future they might use the Integrity Committee uh, a recommendation as something that will hinder him to ascend to the highest position in our country. But I don't think so because, look, in politics you have to understand that it's got its own dynamics. I think the man was uh, pushed into a corner. Uh, why I'm saying that, remember that uh, Didi Mabuza, when he ascended to the current position in the ANC, he had only 200. Uh, a bogus delegate mm -hmm. and now those bogus delegates are in question and in future he knows very well that he's got no constituents i think for him he thought that by going back to Lituli house he was going to go and run the ground so that at the end of the day when he's come to the conference he do have a constituency but now again he was not going to let the vacuum happen in the presidency as a deputy president because there's more marketing there's more more advertising if you are a deputy president of the country and so i think he was caught, was caught between the hard rock and the hard place and then he is still going to be the victim moving forward i don't foresee him becoming the president of our country yeah. and i don't foresee him uh, in the next conference of the ANC becoming the deputy president because the woman might become the deputy president that might replace uh, the cat do you think he will be deputy president of the country though no. no. Look, I think he has decided to say, let, let me submit myself and then let me be the president, I mean deputy president, of which being a deputy president is just a ceremonial position. Mm. Really, has got nothing to do there. And so, <laughs> but he's losing his political ground. And mm. so, unfortunately for him, he's not going to be the president of our country. And also coming back, I mean, next conference of the ANC, he's not going to be the deputy president of the ANC. A woman might become the deputy president of the ANC, not him. Yeah. I mean, let's let's look at some of the, the allegations that are against him. And, of course, he was flagged by the Integrity Commission. And then it got to the point of the committee, it got to the point where he said, okay, let me go and appear before them, let me clear my name, and then, conscience-free, I can go in and be sworn as an MP. I mean, is it possible that that can all happen with all of those allegations against him? He can just appear before the committee, and then everything is fine, and he can be sworn in again. I mean... What does this mean for the Integrity Committee? Look, that's the paradox of our politics. Or let me say, that's the paradox of the ANC politics. Because the man has been the deputy president of the country. And he, has, he currently is the deputy president of the ANC. And so it means that in the ANC, the constituents of the ANC sees nothing wrong with him. You get I mean, that's why they appointed him or elected him to become the, pre the deputy president of the organization. And then even there, the integrity committee of the ANC, we have to bear in mind that is the integrity committee of the ANC, not of South African citizen. They saw nothing wrong then mm -hmm. to make him the deputy president of the country. And so that's the question when you're talking about conscious free. 
we, we, we have to find the line. When is it when Didi Mabuza or the Integrity Committee said we want the untainted? But the fact of the matter is the Integrity Committee is not an investigating, it's got no forensic, it's no evidence. It survives on hearsays. And so as an organization that survives on hearsays, it's got no illegal stand against him. Hence Didi Mabuza, he simply passed through the niggle of the eye of the what you call it, the Integrity Committee. And so also on the other side, it shows the so-called the pitfalls of our democracy, where the integrity committee is saying this man is not proper fit. But as a citizen, we voted for the ANC, and ANC is downthroating all sorts of kind of people as the public representative of South Africans. And so I think to a certain extent, what is happening in the ANC, it shows the fault in our democracy as well as in our electoral system, of which we need to review really now our electoral system. Let's look at Zizi Kodwa. He was red, red flagged as well by the Integrity Committee and um, saying that he's unfit to serve. Then it's now come out that Zizi says it doesn't relate to the sexual assault allegations leveled against him, but he wouldn't say why he was actually called up. So there's another name that we know, and we're still wanting to find out, is he in or is he out? Many say he, he, he probably will be in. I think possible is the part of the dogs of war, if you remember over the weekend, that in the ANC now there are dogs of, wars, uh, of war that are there to protect the president. <laughs> Maybe it's part of those dogs. Yeah. And so by going to the integrity committee, it was just a, a facade for us to say, let me blind the society so that I go to this office as an immaculate individual. And so now that's the question that we have to always ask ourselves. Are we going to vote for the ANC? And then after that, the ANC is going to have, to have what you call it an electoral college that will say this one is good for, for to serve in the public or not to serve. And so I think my main query or my main worry is our vote. When is our vote going to have a voice? Because if you vote for the ANC, inside the ANC, they decide who they are going to give it to us. And then at the end of the day, we are becoming disempowered because whoever that they are giving to us is not the person that we voted, to be quite honest. I don't think the number of people voted for DD. They voted for the ANC, yeah. and then ANC is giving us DD. With so much allegations uh, that are happening uh, in, in, in Pumalang, as well as Zizigot, and so as others. And so, as I'm saying, we are caught between... The ANC as a liberation movement, those who voted for the ANC, as well as these new members of the ANC who masquerade as the, as, as the liberators of South Africa, whereas they are not. Mm. You know that mm. they are not. Mm. Let, let's talk to Pravin Godan, because there's another name that has come up, but not in front of the Integrity Committee, but the public protector came out with a report yes, uh, last week saying that um, the president must take action against him and discipline him for, for you know, things that he has done. We know the story on that one. We've got the EFF that are jumping in at him. Now we've got the ATM, the new kid on the block, also making a request to the National Assembly to question Godin's fitness to hold office. Is anything going to happen to him? Because I'm reading a report that just come out this morning where they're saying, insiders are saying, no, they believe that Godin is going to go straight back into his position as the, uh, the Minister of Public Enterprises. Look, the issue of Pravin is, is old. Uh, it's not something new. And it's not for the first time uh, that the public projects are flagged him as someone who have contravened certain rules while he was a minister of uh, in the treasury. Uh, but the fact of the matter that you have to understand that maybe even the office of the public protector, our own political organizations are trying to dismantle it. They are trying to taint it because they are fighting over this, what we call it, this report, instead of hourly allowing the individual that has been mentioned in this report to take the report to the review and also to prove if the public protector is correct or is not correct. But the sad part about Praveen is that a number of South Africans have seen him as this person that all of us, we can deposit our hope to him. And so we have been seeing him as someone who uphold the law. Mm. And so someone who uphold the law, if he's involved in such kind of allegation, we expect that person just to say, let me present myself to you guys so that you can see that I'm clean. But if he's not doing that, 
is sowing kind of doubt to us as South African citizens to say, how far can we trust the person whom he is being flagged mm. to be involved in this kind of practices, but is not willing to go and communicate and have a proper communication with the public protector. Because these are just allegations for now. But he supports him to prove to the public protector that he is not tainted. But by taking him, I mean, by taking the, the so-called the recommendation for review, I think possible that's also a, a, a proper way. But on the other side, what about the integrity committee? What are they going to say yeah. to someone who is being found wanting, but the integrity committee also must play its role. And so maybe it's supposed also to go through that eye of the integrity committee. Well, you never know. We'll wait and see what happens on that one. But of course, the story that's just come out this morning is this list here in Gauteng. We've been seeing lists coming out all over the, the country and the different provinces. But here, let's put it up on screen. So uh, this is uh, brand new news this morning. And uh, on top of that list is Panyaza Lusufi. I know school, schools are not going to be happy about this, but going into a portfolio, because you'll remember that he, of course, was the MEC of education and doing a lot for education in Gauteng and being very outspoken. MEC for finance and e-government. Look, I think he is one of the most senior position uh, in, 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 in Gauteng or in, uh, in, in the provinces. I think where he is currently is, is the best place because, he, <laughs> you know, there's been that outcry to say that the, the blacks in the ANC are not being entrusted with such kind of uh, prestigious or important position. And so now is a vote of confidence to him as well as to other so-called black politicians that we can give you a responsibility of being an MEC for finance. Because as you know in Guazulu Natal, that is also another rambling a kind of a discourse to say why the so-called black politician are not being entrusted with such kind of a very important position. Yeah. And so for him to be there is a vote of, con of for a vote of confidence to him to say possibly he will look quite well the pace of the province. Yeah. I'm going to pause this because we're going to talk a little bit more about this. I'm going to give you a few minutes because I know you're seeing this for the first time as well. So yes. we're going to have a look to this. It is 7 o'clock here on the program. So let's get our news from Sakina and then we'll come back and just wrap this up with a look at a deeper look at uh, the Gauteng Provincial Executive Council that's just been announced this morning. Sakina.